Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I am going to solve three very interesting examples based on energy band diagram. And along with the examples, I will be explaining you a few essential concepts based on energy band diagram. So before I start with solution, I will show you the questions. And what I want is you just try those questions by your own first. Later you can check for the solution. See, this is first question. Then this is second one. You just freeze the video in between. And this is third question. I hope you might have freeze the video in between and you might have tried those questions by your own. Now I am going to solve first question over here. So if you observe first question, what is given? An n-type semiconductor having uniform doping is biased as shown in figure. So here we are having n-type material and with this n-type material, we are applying this battery by which we are making this material biased. So here you see negative terminal that we are connecting here and this positive terminal that we are connecting here. Right, that is how this material is biased. If EC is the lowest energy level of conduction band, EV is highest energy level of valence band and EF is Fermi level, which one of the following represents the energy band diagram for the biased N-type semiconductor? So we need to see out of this four, which one is the correct energy band diagram for this n type material so let me show you how exactly energy band diagram that is getting formed so as if you talk about pure semiconductor material then see in pure semiconductor material what will happen is you will be having energy level ec like this here there will be energy level ev like this and fermi level fermi level that will be at middle right now for n-type semiconductor material, this Fermi level that will be shifted towards EC and for P-type, this Fermi level that will be shifted towards EV, right? That is how things will happen. So if I show you, see this is what unbiased n-type semiconductor energy band diagram. This is unbiased, right? Now what will happen with biasing? See this is unbiased as I have told you this Fermi level that will be shifted towards EC. So this is for n-type semiconductor material without this battery, right? So this is not the correct option. This is for unbiased. Now what will happen as if you connect this battery? See, as this battery is connected as per this terminal, see here we are having positive terminal, here we are having negative terminal. So in this direction, in this direction, there will be electric field. So as electric field is there in this direction, what will happen is, see this energy band diagram that is there for electrons. So over this side, over this side, we are having positive terminal and you are having electric field which is positive over here. So because of that, what will happen is at this side, energy will be having lower value, right? And that lower value that depends on what is the value of this voltage. So if you observe A, B, C, D in which C, E, C, E, F and E, V that is having lower value over this side and higher value over this side. That's why you can say this is our correct option. Now as if you connect this battery as per plus and minus over here in that case situation will be like this right situation will be like this. Now what if this n type material is replaced by p type. So in that situation this Fermi level that will be shifted towards EV. So in that situation with this same connection as if this is of p type this Fermi level that will be available nearer to this EV like this. And as if you provide reverse polarity of this battery, then this Fermi level with P type, it will be available over here, where lower value that of energy that will be available here and EF will be somewhere over here. That is how diagram may be there in front of you. So that is how you'll have to understand things for energy band diagram. I hope this is clear to you. Let us move on to second interesting question now. This second question is quite interesting and it is quite tricky. Let me read the question first. See here what is given the energy band diagram and electron density profile NX in semiconductor are shown in figure. So here we are having energy with respect to X and log NX that profile is shown over here with respect to X. Assume NX is equals to this with alpha that is 0 0.1 volt per centimeter where alpha is available over here and X expressed in centimeter given kt by q that is 26 millivoltage 
diffusion coefficient that is 36 centimeter square per second and Einstein relation that is d by q that is thermal voltage that is kt by q that is also given the electron current density in ampere per centimeter square at x is equals to 0 is how much. So, we need to find electron current density. So, here what we need to calculate let me show you that first. See we need to find electron current density. See electron current density that is a combination of drift current density plus diffusion current density. Right? That is how two current densities will be there and total current density will be J n over here. Now here see instead of to solve this entire question one basic concept that you need to understand. As if you have non-uniform doping you see here log n x that is given right. So here we are having non-uniform doping. So as if you have non-uniform doping then there will be diffusion current and that diffusion current will be balanced by drift current. So here you see we are having diffusion current that is because of non-uniform doping like this and this is drift current. So this drift current this drift current that will be balanced by diffusion current. So both of this will be cancelling effect of each other if you don't provide external field like you see here we have seen this anti material is given with external potential but here we are not giving any external potential to material as you don't give external potential to material resultant drift current density will be equals to resultant diffusion current density and both will be there in opposite direction so this two parameters diffusion current density and drift current density both will be balancing each other so here both are equal and in opposite direction in opposite direction right so as both are equal and in opposite direction resultant current density that will be zero over here so your option will be zero over here so you don't need to place values of this current and you don't need to derive everything here directly based on fundamental you can say this will be zero if this question is there in university in that situation what you need to do is you need to place the values of drift current diffusion current and then you will have to differentiate this nx with respect to x for diffusion current and then at last you will have to substitute all this data which is given to you and at last you will be observing this jn will be zero but here i am not going to derive all those things here you need to understand basic fundamentals sometimes students are thinking like questions are huge and they are having that psychology like you may need to solve this by so many other parameters and at last you will be getting answer but if you know if you don't apply external field or external potential then this drift current and diffusion current in non-uniform doping you will be having both are equal and in opposite direction which leads to this electron current density that is zero over here. So here you don't need to calculate anything directly you can say it is zero. Right. Let us move on to third interesting question now. This third question is quite interesting. Let us read the question first. See in third question what is given silicon is doped with boron. So when you dope silicon with boron you are making p type semiconductor material. Why the reason is boron is acceptor impurity. It is trivalent impurity. So by having boron what you do is by having boron we make p type semiconductor material right. And here boron concentration is given that is 4 into 10 to the power 17 atoms per centimeter cube. So here acceptor impurity Na that is given that is 4 into 10 to the power 17 atoms per centimeter cube. Assuming the intrinsic carrier concentration of silicon that to be 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube. So here Ni is given that is 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube that is given and kt by q that is 25 millivolt so here kt by q that is given that is 25 millivolt at 300 kelvin compared to undoped silicon the fermi level of doped silicon will be so here compared to undoped means intrinsic semiconductor what will be the fermi level here it will go up 
or a down that is the first question after that by what value it will go that we need to understand so let me show you that first see here with semiconductor material here you will be having ec here you will be having ev right and see here we will be having here we will be having fermi level right and this is for this is for pure semiconductor material right now see what we do is we are making p type semiconductor material by adding boron so as if you make p type semiconductor material what will happen this fermi level now that will get shifted over here right so technically for pure it will be available over here but with p type it will be available over here so what will happen this ef will go down this ef will go down over here with boron concentration so here if you observe four options so this options are false that you can directly say right now question is by how much value it will go down so for that simple formula that we need to understand here and that even we have seen it in theory portion see here ei minus ef that will be kt into ln and here for p type we are calculating so na divided by ni that we need to place now this difference that is there in terms of joule right and if you wanted to have this in terms of electron volt kt by q kt by q that is given 25 millivolt so here kt that will be 25 milli volt into electron that you can say right into ln na is how much 4 into 10 to the power 17 divided by ni that is 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 so here this is there in terms of electron and then everything is there in terms of volt so 25 into 10 to the power minus 3 into this that you need to do right ln 4 by 1.5 into 10 to the power 7 and you just do this calculation in terms of in calculator and you will be getting your answer in terms of electron volt let me check my answer over here so my answer over here that is 4. 0.427 so here my answer is 0.427 right so it will go down it will go down by 0.427 over here right so correct option over here that will be c over here so that is how you can understand things so sometimes you can directly eliminate some options as i have shown you based on fundamentals and as if you have question based on what will be the value then simply by this equation you can understand this right and here you just need to understand by what value it is happening right it is not like you will have to remember this in sequence you just simply say e1 minus e2 that is kt ln n1 by n2 and place n1 and n2 value over here right over here and then you will be having some value and that some value that you can understand whether it is going down or up based on which type of impurity that we are adding so i have seen students are having confusion in terms of what will be the sequence you don't need to understand sequence you just need to understand whether it is n type or p type if it is n type then then this fermi level that will be shifting over here so by what value it will be shifting or that you just need to apply e1 minus e2 kt ln n1 by n2 place values whatever value come by which it is going up or down directly you can say so you don't need to understand what will be the exact sequence of Na by Ni. I know students are having confusion like whether I should place Ni by Na or Na by Ni. That is how they are getting confused. And if they remember like okay it is Na by Ni. At that time sometimes they write it like this EF minus EI. And then they think like oh I need to remember so many things. But here by understanding you can understand all those things. You don't need to remember too many things. I hope you have understood this still. If anything I would like to share. Please note it down in comment section. I will be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.